Hello everyone! My name is Mary, and I'd like to welcome you to another Secret Life of Bugs check-in. Now, as you may have heard, last week was actually Pollinator Week. And even though it's technically over now, I think we can keep the celebrations going. How about you? Today, I'm down in the Rose Garden, where I want to take a few minutes to introduce you to an interesting pollinator that you might find down here. They're big and impressive, so they're hard to miss. The pollinator I want to talk about is, of course, the Cicada Killer Wasp. If you walk through the Rose Garden right now, you'll likely see them. They almost look like a swarm of huge hornets zipping around, maybe even stopping to hover in front of you, which can be understandably concerning. But fear not, these guys are nothing to worry about. They're actually a good thing to have around. Now mostly what you'll be seeing right now are the males. They're very busy right now, staking out territory, chasing off trespassers, and fighting with each other over the best spots. They might seem aggressive, especially with their lack of personal space, but fortunately they are absolutely nothing to be scared of. Let me explain why. Now you may remember a couple of weeks back when Kelsey, our wonderful educator, was talking about the carpenter bees in this area. As it happens, the cicada killers have a lot in common with these carpenter bees. First of all, a lot like with the carpenter bees, what you'll see a lot is those territorial males buzzing around, grappling with each other, and maybe even challenging something much larger than themselves. And also just like the carpenter bee, these guys are much more bark than bite, or in this case, sting. The female cicada killer is actually the only one that possesses a stinger at all. And fortunately, she's much less interested in bothering passersby than the males are. In fact, she is so unlikely to sting you that you'd probably have to physically grab her in order for it to happen. And even then, the sting isn't even that bad. It's outranked by even the domestic honeybee on the insect sting pain index. Now, the female cicada killer is actually the more interesting of the two, in my opinion. You can recognize her by her size. She's much bigger than the males. And she's also the one responsible for all that cicada killing that gives the species its common name. It's actually quite an impressive feat, as the cicadas are usually quite a bit bigger than the wasps. So what the female will do is she'll seek out a cicada, paralyze it with her stinger, and haul it back to her burrow. Sometimes the cicadas are so much heavier than her that she actually has to climb a tree just to get enough height to glide back with it. She'll then drop it off in her underground tunnels as food for a single larva. Now, if that larva does happen to be female, she will actually give it more than one cicada, because they have to grow so much more than the males do. Once the babies are finished with their cicadas, they will pupate, and then eventually emerge from the burrow as adult wasps, ready to begin the cycle again. So, why are these guys good to have in the garden? Well, for one thing, they do our flowers a favor. While the larvae do indeed eat those cicadas that their mom brings them, the adults mostly feed on flower nectar just like our bees, butterflies, mosquitoes, beetles, etc., they will help pollinate the flowers while they're browsing for nectar. They also do our local trees a favor by controlling the cicada population. So the next time you see these large wasps in the rose garden, you can think of them as valuable garden employees. Thanks so much for joining me for another Secret Life of Bugs check-in. If you'd like to meet even more invertebrates native to the garden, stop by the Secret Life of Bugs table. We're open 10 to 2, Saturday through Wednesday. See you next month.